Good evening to you, and I do want to welcome all of our viewers here locally, and maybe even around the country, around the world, as you are tuning in this evening for our midweek service here on Facebook Live. Again, uh, we would give anything to be able to be back to a normal place where everyone can come and gather physically here on the church property. But in these days where everything is everything but normal, except for a God who does not change. Uh, we want to be able to provide for those who attend our church, folks in our community, uh, the opportunity to bring church to you in your home. I want to encourage you right now, as you're watching Facebook Live this evening and watching our service, have your Bible handy for you. In just a little while, we'll have a message from God's Word. Be ready in a moment when we project the words up on the screen. Whether you're sitting in the living room with your families together for worship, maybe you're at the kitchen, who knows, you could be in the bedroom, wherever you're gathered at to watch tonight's service. We want you to try to treat this as much like church as you possibly can as we worship the Lord together here in this uncertain time. This is, for so many people, a scary time. It can be a paralyzing time. Our encouraging folks every day as I talk to folks either on the phone or in person, this isn't a time to panic. It's a time to be prudent. It's a time to be prayerful. God's on the throne. He's going to see us through. And so let's sing to the Lord tonight. Let's worship Him. Brother Andrew, what do you have for us tonight at home as we worship God together? Good evening. We're going to start with Because He Lives. Um, and it's a wonderful assurance, just as the preacher was talking about. Um, because He Lives tonight, um, we can be assured that no matter what happens, He's still in control. So we're going to sing the first and second verse of Because He Lives. God sent His Son, they call Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He lived and died to Thank you. 
Amen. If you were singing that song with us, that should give you some confidence uh, because he lives. Uh, we have nothing to fear, and all hope is in Jesus Christ. Uh, as we pray um, to open up the service, just want to mention that perhaps one of the few good things about this epidemic is possibly you have some more time in your life where you can actually take that time and pray. Uh, because what you're going to see in a few minutes that uh, we have quite a few people on our prayer sheet and uh, they need our prayer, uh, the president, uh, the country, and we just pray that somehow, some way, this situation will give honor and glory to God. So as we pray to open up the service, please remember Brother Paul and Ms. Becky Garner and uh, they're uh, in his physical condition and uh, Mr. Alan Walston, uh, he's already had a couple of surgeries and he has a couple of surgeries to go. Uh, to remove infection and different things. So please keep them, Misty, in your prayers. I know they would greatly appreciate it. So let's go to the Lord in prayer now. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much, Lord, that like the preacher said, it doesn't matter where they're at. They can be kitchen, dining room, uh, it doesn't matter, living room. Wherever they're at, Lord, they can have church, Lord. Why? Because we are the church. We are the body of Christ. We don't have to be in the building, God. So I pray that you would meet with us, Lord. Uh, the viewers that are watching, Lord, I pray they would get a special blessing out of worshiping you tonight. And I pray you give the preacher the words to speak. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, we want to welcome you all that are viewing. Uh, like the preacher said, it could be all the way around the world. You don't know who's viewing uh, on Facebook, but we want to welcome you. Hope you can worship the Lord with us tonight. And uh, also, just want to mention one thing. I know he's going to take care of announcements. One thing about the junior camp, as of right now, uh, we are still having junior camp, so we need to get those registration forms filled out. Uh, if you have any questions about that, you can see me and, or Miss Stacy Howe. Uh, you can get up with us on Facebook, call the church, uh, whatever you need to do, and we'll get those forms to you. At this time, we'll get Pastor to give us a, uh, our announcements. Thank you, Brother Justin, for that. Again, uh, in this time in which we live, one of the ways that we are able to communicate with you as the church family is through Facebook and social media. And Several things have been going on this week. Of course, uh, one of the things that is actually going out in the mail Tomorrow is a letter to all of those who attend our church. And in this letter, uh, we kind of address the hour in which we're living in. And as Brother Justin mentioned just a moment ago, I'm glad that the Church of the Living God is more than a building. This is where we meet together to go to church. But the reality is, as you're watching me tonight, if you're a born-again, blood-bought child of the King, you are the church. Though we can't come together physically on the property, the work of the church of God, it goes on. We're at a crossroads. You're like, preacher, what do we do in days like this? Well, one of the things that I'm reminded of is what Paul did in his life when he was at a crossroads. In the book of Philippians, he finds himself in house arrest. Uh, he may lose his life at that moment for the cause of Jesus Christ. And in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 14, Paul wrote these words under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said, you know what? I'm going to press on. I'm going to keep on keeping on for Jesus Christ. And so today I actually prepared a video that is attached to our Facebook page. I encourage you to watch that video. I'll go through and kind of explain that, that acronym for the word press. To pray for each other to remain close to God, to encourage one another, to be good stewards in these days, and to stay strong in Christ. But watch that video. It's about eight minutes long. It's located on our Facebook Live. It's also located on our church's new YouTube page. You say, wow, we have a YouTube uh, page for our church. We certainly do. All you have to do is if you will go online to mountcalvaryfwvchurch.com. At the very top, there's a tab where you can click on Facebook to go to our Facebook page. There's a tab for YouTube, and we're uploading all of our services and special messages to the community and congregation on that YouTube page, and you can check out these messages to the church family. Some are asking uh, that are a part of our church family, what y'all doing about school in these days? Well, as we announced to our school parents today, and also uh, by a letter that's in the mail and a letter that was posted on our school Facebook page, uh, next week will be our spring break week here for Mount Calvary Christian Academy. And then on March the 30th, if our students are unable to return to the classroom, 
we're beginning what we're calling an at-home learning initiative and extension of Mount Calvary uh, Christian Academy. And so I want to rest assured for our church family, our Christian education ministry arm of our church will go on either on campus or off campus for the students and families of Mount Calvary Christian Academy. And so a lot going on, a lot of uncertainties. Keep tuning in. Let us bring church to you. Tune in this coming Sunday, 11 a.m. will be the morning service. 5 p.m. will be the evening service. You tune in. Let us bring church to you here in these days. Again, thank you so much for tuning in to Facebook Live because of the nature of these services and us wanting every service to be action-packed with the best for God it can possibly be. We're going to pull back into our vault and we have a choir special that we think will be a blessing to your heart tonight. So at this time, you enjoy the Mount Calvary Church Choir as they sing.
Amen. And if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the cross is the most beautiful thing in all the world. I absolutely love that song because compared to the cross, the coronavirus is nothing. Uh, all we need is the cross. So, now I know this may be a little bit awkward for you, and you can't imagine how awkward it is for us doing this to an empty church, but we want you to sing out at the house, and I love it. Uh, when Heather and myself and the kids get together and we get into a situation like this, I'm talking about them kids, they sing out. So I hope y'all are doing the same thing. Let's sing out and praise the Lord with your voice and with your heart as Brother Andrew leads us now. Okay, we're going to sing a really familiar hymn, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light back there again brother Andrew that is a brand new song I've been in church almost 40 years and that is a new one for me but it has a great message so folks at home we're going to teach you a brand new song brother Andrew is going to teach it to you on this song called trusting Jesus so let's sing that again for the folks at home and let's see if we can catch on to it together brother Andrew mm -hmm. of that song well you know if we were here in church right now this would be the time where our ushers would come down and those who attend here regularly you can almost imagine in your mind our guys walking down the aisle and uh, us asking one of them to pray and take up our Wednesday evening tithes and offerings but the reality is we're living in a different time physically we can't be here on property but yet we want to encourage everyone it's important though you can't be here physically, to continue to be faithful in your tithes and offerings. And we're all accustomed, hey, the plate goes by, put my tithes and offerings in. What do I do because I can't do that? How can I every week give my tithes and offerings? And so I've got some slides, three ways to do so. Number one, if you have access to the Internet right now, uh, you can go right there to mountcalvaryfwbchurch.com or when the program's over with it on our church service, and you can go there at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see a word that says donate. 
click on that and all of a sudden PayPal will come up and you can easily put in whatever the dollar amount is and where it's going and be able to do online giving. A second way you can do it is just the good old fashioned way. You can mail your weekly tithes and offerings right here to the church at Mount Calvary Free Will Baptist Church, P.O. Box 250, Hookerton, North Carolina, 28538. And then a third way is, is if you want to just drop them by every week, Monday through Friday, at least during 10 and 2. There may be certainly other times they're here, but, be, but, but designated between the 2 and p.m. time slot. Brother Kevin and Miss Karen will be here. You can see them drop off your tithes and offerings. If you need to come at a different time, if you call, uh, they can accommodate that. But again, it is so important that we're faithful to give. As I mentioned in our letter, listen, there's some folks who are hurting right now. So those that maybe God is blessed, we want you to prayerfully consider being even more generous about your weekly giving in these days. And so at this time, we're going to throw a slide up for some online giving. As that slide makes its way to the screen, Brother Andrew, he's going to play through just a couple of verse of offering and so give you an opportunity if you want to do online giving at this time. Brother Andrew. the time where we usually get our prayer sheets out uh, but you should be able to see those they're going to put that up on the um, screen so you can follow along with the prayer sheet and we do have a lot of names there so you can go back uh, get that off the um, Facebook once we get finished with it but the ministry of the week is MCCA we definitely need your prayer a lot of things getting postponed of course everything this week uh, including Friday and uh, uh, we don't know how long things are going to be postponed, um, but uh, we're still here and we're still going to be trying to do a lot with the young people, myself, and um, uh, we're going to try to keep you busy. But for the Mount Calvary Christian Academy, uh, I love what the pastor's doing, him and the uh, teachers meeting together. Uh, it's a lot of big decisions they're making, so please, please, please be in prayer for them as the leadership makes decisions uh, to best educate your children. A staff member, Ms. Stacy Howe, uh, home missionary Rex and Brenda Evans. Uh, foreign missionary Hemant and uh, Becky Patel, uh, college student Hunter Walston, and especially right now with his dad having some physical uh, difficulties, uh, please pray for that family. Military personnel, Corey Moore, and of course Rebecca there. Uh, John Bell, our North Carolina representative. Uh, you see all those that are in the assisted living rest home area there in the gray. Uh, also right there we have Paul Garner and Alan Walston. Now that, that is an error. Uh, they are at Vidant. They are at Vidant right now. Uh, of course, you, of course, we're not allowed to be there right now unless you are a family. And then there's um, age restrictions there. And then you'll see all the many prayer requests in that gray area. And look, these are not the only ones. There are so many people in our lives uh, that need prayer right now. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. You pray there uh, at your spot, and I'll pray here, and let's just uh, reach the throne together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you again so much for allowing us to meet here tonight, Lord. Uh, so many different ministries here at Mount Calvary being affected by this. Uh, our academy, Lord, so many young people, uh, so many older people, Lord, in our congregation. Uh, God, we're reaching out to you to ask for your help, to ask for your guidance. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would give the pastor and all those in charge, Lord, the clarity of mind, Lord, to know exactly what to do to make these decisions. Uh, 
Lord, we pray for those in assisted living, Lord, that uh, perhaps they don't understand what's going on and they're lonely because their loved ones can't come see them, Lord. I just pray that you would be there uh, for them, Lord. When we can't be there with those we love, you are always there, uh, God. And we, there's so many needs, Father, physical needs, uh, but also spiritual needs, Father. Our prayer is that somehow, some way, you would be given glory through this situation, Lord, and somehow, some way, people would get saved through this situation when they see that how fragile life is and how it truly is a vapor, Lord. God, I pray that you would uh, continue to convict their hearts, Lord, and have patience with them, Father, and that they would get saved, Lord, before it's too late, because this is just a taste of things that are to be coming, Lord. So, God, we just ask for your help. We ask for your guidance, and we worship you through the process, Lord. Uh, though you slay me, I will worship you, Lord, it says in your word, God. No matter what happens, you're on the throne, and we love you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, Brother Andrew is going to have our special music. Um, when I was thinking about what to sing tonight, um, this song came to my mind. It's a song from Patch the Pirate for kids, but it's, I think it's, just, it's appropriate for everybody um, at, at the time we are facing um, as a society. Um, the title of it is called, How Can I Fear? And it's pretty much um, a bedtime lullaby for parents to sing to their kids when they're scared of the dark. But, you know, as, as, as humans, we go through a lot of things that we, we, we feel are out of our control. You know, what we're facing right now is one of those situations but, in, you know, even if you're isolated from all of your friends and family, even if you're at home by yourself, um, you don't have to fear tonight because the Lord is on your side. And as long as we have Jesus on our side, there's nothing we need to fear tonight. So I'm going to sing, How Can I Fear? Thank you for that great song, Brother Andrew. I want to invite you at home now to take your Bible and turn to the book of Luke, chapter number 10. The book of Luke, chapter number 10. Typically, on our Wednesday night service, for those who maybe are unable to be here, we have some 
handouts that we pass out uh, for whatever study we're going through on Wednesday nights. Of course, you're at home. I haven't quite figured out yet how I'm going to get handouts to folks on Wednesday nights while we're going through this period uh, here in our church ministry. But I do want to encourage you to get out a pen, maybe a piece of paper, write some things down. I know through the years as a boy growing up and in my adult years as I'm in church, I'm writing things in my Bible, I'm underlining, I'm underscoring things. Fact of the matter is, David, if you can zoom in, you can see right here in my Bible, right here in front of me, where I have uh, written in it down through the years, and I'll I have different things underlined and words in the column. And so as you've got your Bible there, you can write in it. If you're using maybe a tablet in your lap, I know Brother Doug Jones showed me a neat feature where he's able to uh, type in things there in the verse as I'm preaching and teaching and so I encourage you write things down and uh, underline things and keep notes this will help you not only in the now as you're following along with the message but also help you down the road that the Lord can use these things at a later date we're looking at in these days men and women of the Bible here in Luke chapter 10 we're introduced to a man that we do not know his name as John, Mike, Paul, or whatever his name may be, but we are known by his nationality. In Luke chapter 10, look with me if you will, in verse number 30, the Bible says, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, again, if you write in your Bibles, take that pen right now or that highlighter and underline, circle or highlight that word Samaritan. As he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had... What's those three words? Let's say it aloud there in your living room or at the coffee table. Compassion on him. Went to him, bound up his wounds, poured oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said to him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Notice these five words. Go and do thou likewise. Let's pray together for just a moment. Father, I love you. And I do thank you, Lord, that in spite of of us not being able to be together physically in this church auditorium this evening. You have given us, through the means of technology, the ability to bring church into the homes of our congregation and folks in this community and around the world who will watch this service now and later this evening. Father, I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you would take me, as I've prayed so often, hide me behind the cross. Lord, I'm not interested in folks necessarily seeing or hearing Frank Rice tonight. But Lord, I do want them to see you. I want them to hear you. God, I believe in this hour that we live, this man that is described for us in Luke chapter 10 serves as a great example of what all of us should strive to be in this hour we find ourselves in America. So Lord, speak to me and through me, I pray even now. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, as we examine this passage of Scripture tonight, you know, there is a tendency in this hour to focus just on our four and no more. Make sure that our spouses are taken care of, make sure our kids are taken care of, and kind of have an inward look of making sure everything in my home is good. And by the way, hey, take care of your spouse. Take care of your kids. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But I believe that there is a lesson to be learned here in Luke chapter 10. That in a moment of crisis, not only should we see that we're taking care of our families, but also we should work hard 
to have an outward look and try to minister to those who are around us. I was reminded today that many, many years ago, when John F. Kennedy was inaugurated as one of the presidents of the United States of America, he made this statement, and we're going to put this slide up on the TV screen for you to see. John F. Kennedy said, And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. You know, that statement is a powerful and in history books ever since I was a kid growing up has been something that has been in a historical great statement for the world to see and to try to live by. You know, I believe that statement finds in part its roots here in Luke chapter 10. We find the story of a man in a parable who found himself in a hard way, a dire situation, near death. And there were people who were brought into his life and ultimately one man made the right decision and he's forever known as the good Samaritan. So the night is we're faced with a worldwide pandemic. As our community and our country is trying to cope with this coronavirus, as folks watch TV and listen to the radio and they are scared and afraid and they're wondering, will it get me? Will it get one of my loved ones? How will this affect me with my job and, and the economy and all these different unknown factors? Listen, God has raised us up, Mount Calvary. God has raised us up, dear Christian, who's watching this service tonight and has placed us here in this moment, like Mordecai said to Esther, for such a time as this to be a difference maker in our community for Jesus Christ. And so the night for the next few minutes, I want us to consider the subject, the good Samaritan. Here in this passage, there's three truths I want us to look at that we learn from, from this New Testament parable taught by Jesus that we can make application to our country, to our lives this evening. Notice, first of all, in your Bibles in verse number 30, I want us to see, and I hope you'll write this down, number one, the road of humanity the road of humanity here in this parable about the good Samaritan the man that opens up in verse 30 we never know his name is never given to us who was wounded who was hurt who was left for dead however the path that this man took in this passage has a lot of similarities to what America is like Today, I hope you'll write these things down. Notice, first of all, in verse 30, we learn that the path that he was on was a downward path. Look in verse 30. The Bible says, And a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. It's sad to say, but America the night is headed on a downward path. And what do you mean by that? Well, as of this evening, and again, these numbers are constantly changing, there are currently 75 cases of coronavirus here in North Carolina. In the United States, as of this afternoon, there were 8,990 cases. There have been 150 people in America who have died already. But yet, what breaks my heart, and I want you to watch this, what breaks my heart is apart from President Trump, declaring last Sunday a national day of prayer. In every press briefing, and it feels like that every five to ten minutes, breaking news, this governor's coming on to talk about their plan. This public official's coming on for their plan. We have the White House briefing. We have Governor Cooper's briefing. We've got this mayor's briefing. And all these briefings, here tonight, here in the room, helping with Facebook Live, we have Brother Justin and Brother Andrew. Fellas, when's the last time, apart from President Trump, a week ago, that we're hearing people say, listen, we need to pray. 
we need to get on our knees. Listen, throughout human history, whenever America has been in a crisis, Americans have had enough sense, our leaders have had enough spiritual fortitude about them to realize, hey, listen, what we need is God to come on the scene and help us out of the mess that we're in. Where are the cries for prayer in America today? Do you know what our problem is? America is heading on a downward path. It breaks my heart, but since we kicked God out of our public schools in 1962 and 63 by kicking the Bible out and prayer out, and then when Roe v. Wade came down in 1973 and we legalized the murdering of millions of babies year after year after year, we've raised up over five decades generations of people who do not know who the God of the Bible is. And as a result, in this hour in which we're living in, when we as America need God most, nobody knows to cry out to God. Hey, listen, America's heading in a bad direction. We're on a downward path. But as you see here in verse 30, not only do we see a downward path, but I want you to see as well, this man was journeying on a dangerous path. Look in verse 30 again. The Bible says, And he fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Folks, can I tell you something? This wasn't the ushers at the door at Mount Calvary Christian Academy to give you a, a handshake. Of course, we're in social distancing, so we can't shake hands. But to give you a smile and say, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. No, these were some bad men with bad intentions. And we're on a mission to rob, kill if necessary, and strip this man of everything that was valuable to him. And I tell you something, in America today, there is a real devil... There are real demons and there are many who are being used of Satan in this hour on a mission to destroy the families and the people of America. In this moment of a crisis, what's breaking my heart, don't you listen to me carefully, is there are millions of Americans who are turning to the bottle in these days instead of turning to the God of the Bible. I heard about this on the radio and actually looked it up. According to the New York Times, an article just five days ago, in the cities of Seattle, Boston, and Chicago, the sales of wine, beer, and liquor were up 300 to 500 percent. What's happening, preacher? I'm going to tell you what's happening. Folks are scared. Folks are panicking. Folks are being paralyzed, and as a result, instead of getting on their face and saying, Oh God, be merciful to us. Oh God, we need you. Oh God, forgive us of our sins and our wickedness. We're turning to the bottle. We're turning to whatever else we can find. And the devil is sitting back, and he's laughing while folks are wrecking and ruining their life. Instead of running to Jesus, looking for his help here in these desperate days. It's a dangerous time in America spiritually and many are heading down the wrong road, a downward road, a dangerous road. We see here in this passage the road of humanity. But I want us to see in this same parable there is a real opportunity. Look with me if you will in verse 31. The Bible says, And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked at him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Boy, what a real opportunity there was to help a man who was hurting. Folks, can I tell you something? All around our viewing audience tonight, there are Americans, there are people who are hurting all around us. Folks in fear, folks whose lives are wrecked and ruined by sin, folks who right now financially are out of work or having their hours cut back, they're not sure where they're going to do or where their help's going to come from. And God's given us in this moment a real opportunity to be a difference maker in this hour for Jesus Christ to press on for God. Here in this passage, they had a real opportunity. Notice how they responded. In verse number 31, we see that 
a certain priest came by. He represents the leaders in this passage. He is a leader, had an opportunity. Right now, if there are listening this evening, maybe some preachers who are at home this evening and you have your service on a different evening and you're tuning in just trying to have some more spiritual nutrition. Maybe tonight you're a pastoral staff member. Maybe this evening in our church or other churches, you're a Sunday school teacher, a deacon, a leader in your ministry. This is our opportunity in these days to reach out and love people and share the gospel and to be a difference maker in the hurting lives of those who are around us. We cannot afford to fumble the football in these days. Listen, folks don't need to listen to Anderson Cooper for their spiritual advice right now. Listen, by the way, I don't want to make anybody mad right now. And I listen to Rush Limbaugh. But Rush Limbaugh don't need to be the counselor on how we're going to get through coronavirus. You know who needs to be the voice in this hour to help? in our communities lead people through this difficult time. It needs to be the preachers and the pastoral staff members and the deacons and the Sunday school teachers and the leaders that God has raised up. God has raised us up for such a time as this. Leaders, we have an opportunity. There was another group of people that had an opportunity. Look in verse 32. Likewise, a Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. The second group we see are the Levites or what we're going to call the spiritually mature Christians. You know, I'm blessed here at Mount Calvary to pastor a number of folks who's been saved a long time. Many of you grew up in good families or if you did not, you've been saved and you've had some great pastors in days gone by. You're stuck with what you got now, but great pastors in days gone by that have done a great job of preparing you for this moment. And there's people around you that are hurting. I think about my father. Before he came to know Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, he didn't know anything about the Bible. Zero. He said, son, the day I got saved, I just figured that the word Sunday school must be on every page in the Bible because, you know, I just figured, hey, this Sunday school's a good idea. It must be something found in the... I mean, listen, he didn't know anything. We're in a society where folks all that they know is they don't know what to do. And as spiritually mature Christians, this is your hour to mobilize and to be a difference maker for Christ. Sadly, in the parable of the Good Samaritan, the leaders, they did nothing. The Levites, they did nothing. But in verse 33, I want you to see that the least likely candidate in all the world was a difference maker. The Bible says, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. You know, Samaritans were looked down in that period of time. They were a cross between a Gentile and a Jew. They were considered the scum of the earth. Yet God says, you know what? I can take a scum of the earth person that's willing to think about others and think about me instead of just focusing on themselves, and I can use them to be a difference maker in this world. You say, Pastor, I want God to use me in my Esther moment, in the Esther moment that God's given us as Christians to mobilize. I want God to use me. Preacher, what can I do in this hour? How can I be that good Samaritan? I want you to look at, finally, the requirements for difference making. The requirements for difference making. Look with me, if you will, here in verse 33. The Bible says, But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. Write this down, number one. Write this down. Take time. Take time. Hey, he was on a journey. He was trying to get somewhere. Listen, I realize right now, all of us certainly are trying to make sure that we're taking care of our families, that we have whatever supplies we feel like that we need, whether it's food, finances, things like that. But listen, in our journey from A to B, let's take time for others. Take time. By the way, as Brother Justin alluded to when we were talking about praying over the prayer sheet, 
when we were talking about folks in our ministry and our community that need to have needs and we'll have some extra time on our hands. Spend some of that time trying to minister and help others. Take time. But number two, pop it up on the screen, fellas. Number two, have compassion. Have compassion. You know, people in this world don't care how much we know till they know how much we care. If there's ever been a time that our hearts ought to hurt for others, it ought to be in the hour that we live in. Listen, fear is real. And there's people in America who are afraid. Listen, there are folks who are 60 and above who are legitimately afraid. Some of you are listening to me tonight. There's folks that are afraid. I want you to know something. Miss Janelle and Preacher love you. We understand you're afraid and we're here for you. Mount Calvary Church is here for you. There's folks who are afraid. There's folks who need us to have compassion on them. And then finally, not only do we need to take time, not only do we need to have compassion, but we need to do what we can. Do what you can. Say, preacher, what, what can I do right now? You know, we're supposed to have social distancing. Crowds of 10 or less. You know, what can I do? I'm not a multi-millionaire. You know, I, I, I'm not a, you know, a, a philanthropist that I can give away just millions and billions of dollars. What can I do? L- let me give you just several things real quick. Number one, you can call people. You know, AT&T years ago used to have a little thing, reach out and touch someone. Well, the way you can reach out and touch someone and not get infected with the coronavirus is you can call people on the telephone. Pick up the phone. Give them a call. Check on them, especially those who are maybe elderly in our church, in the community. Those maybe that are going through a difficult time. Maybe some that their hours have been reduced back. Get on the phone. Give them a call. One of the things that me and my wife and some of our staff members are going to try to work on towards the end of this week, and we want to try to do every week between now and when we can all meet together back in church again, is just try to get on the phone and call and check on each other. You can call someone. Hey, you can text somebody. You know, I know some folks aren't into the texting thing, and that's fine. But you know what? A lot of us are able to text. A simple text message. Hey, how are you doing? I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you today. You can text someone. And number three, we can all pray for each other. You, this evening, put up on the screen, was the prayer sheet of Mount Calvary, Free Will Baptist Church. You can take that prayer sheet, get on your knees, and try to break it up in the sections and maybe throughout the week try to pray through that entire prayer sheet. But I'm going to tell you, this is an hour where America, we need to get on praying ground. We need to pray for God's protection. We need to pray for the sick. We need to pray for those who have lost loved ones. We need to pray for folks in leadership. We need to pray for those who are lost. We need to pray. Listen, I'm going to tell you what, some of the greatest things that have happened in the history of mankind happened when God's people got on their knees and prayed and got a hold of God because prayer does still change things. So tonight, the question is not, can we make a difference? The question is, will we allow God to help us make a difference? May God help us not fumble the football. If God could use this Samaritan, I'm convinced that God can take a hillbilly from the sticks of West Virginia who's the least likely candidate in all the world to get saved, more or less answer the call to preach and be a pastor. God can use me. I know God can use anyone. May we in this hour ask God to use us to be difference makers for Jesus Christ. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. In your home right now, You don't have, like we would have at church, a typical altar. You know, many a times in my lifetime, I've used my couch as an altar. I've got by my bed, I've used it as an altar. I've got by the chairs in the kitchen before, used as an altar. Listen, anywhere that we can kneel to pray can be a place that can be an altar for us to God. Tonight, I want to encourage you as you're sitting here watching this service, Maybe get on your knees. If you're not able to kneel and pray, then bow your head. Search your heart. First of all, say, Lord, I pray that you would help me tonight to open my eyes. 
just be reminded of just what kind of shape our country's in. How far as a country that we have strayed and wandered from God. Yet tonight, Lord, for whatever reason, you've chosen for me to be alive at a crossroad historically in America. A time like this country has never known in its history. Could this be what God's going to use to bring national revival? Could this be what God uses for us to reach people in our community for Christ in a greater capacity than we've ever seen or maybe have seen in a long, long time? It could be. This might be it. A bunch of us have been praying for revival for a long time. God said, okay, I'm going to send it to you. We've not had it in so long. We don't know what it looks like, but this is how revival comes. Maybe tonight we just need to say, oh God, help us not fumble the football. God, help us be difference makers for you. Help me to take time. God, help me to have compassion. and Help me to do what I can for Jesus Christ. Now, Father, tonight I pray that you hear our prayers. You'd move in our hearts. That God, instead of focusing on what seems so bad, God, that we would see this as maybe an opportunity of what could be so good and great as an opportunity to minister to the hurting and reach many men, women, boys, and girls for Jesus Christ. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. And all God's people at home said, Amen and Amen. Those watching on Facebook now, we'll encourage you here in just a moment when we go off the air. God used this message to challenge your heart this evening. Share it with your family and your friends. And may God help us be difference makers and good Samaritans for Christ in these days. If you need us, please call us. We're here for you. Our next service will be Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on Facebook Live. We'll also be uploading the night service at the conclusion tomorrow morning on our YouTube channel that you can access through our church website. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you. Good night and God bless you.